Hey man. Uh, you know, on, on this channel I try to take a look at like well-known brands to see if they stand up to the hype, but when it makes sense, I also try to show lesser known brands that deserve more hype, I think. And that's that's this one. This is an underrated brand that guys in the space of uh, heritage fashion, reproduction of vintage garments, like those guys will like this company. But also just anyone who wants a solid leather jacket and anyone with I think any body type too, they'll find something at this company, Cockpit USA, which is a company that number one, made and still sells the jacket from Top Gun. Number two, makes the jacket that Rocky wears to Russia in Rocky IV, which is the best Rocky. I'll watch it with anyone, ever. If you're in New York, hit me up, I'm gonna watch it with you. Number three, Cockpit USA still supplies jackets to the US Air Force, and they've supplied them to the Navy, the Army, and NASA, for good measure. And like, they don't even have a store. Like, I mean, they do, but it's, it's really just their corporate office with a small showroom, and it's up an elevator and a funny part of Midtown. Like, it's, it's not a very conspicuous, very well-known brand. But I think there's a good chance you could find something you like. And also, you know, number four, everything's made in the USA as well. After meeting with Rudy at the headquarters and trying on a lot of jackets, I found one that works best for my body type, which is kind of an annoying one. It's fairly slim with like an unusually long torso. My weightlifting buddies tell me I'm built like a corgi dog. Shockingly, they had a vintage jacket from the 1930s that fit me well, which I never thought I would find in a vintage brand, which are usually short and boxy. So my challenge here with this video is to review my jacket, which is just one fit of many that they sell and just one model of many models, while also conveying to you how interesting the brand is and how I think they deserve to be in the conversation of very good American leather jacket brands. Because there really are a lot of very bad leather jacket brands. Because everyone wants a good leather jacket. So everyone's jumping in there to try and get that market. I don't need to waste time in this video giving you the whole spiel about leather jackets make the uncool cool and the cool even cooler, but they do. The trick is finding one that fits your body. And here's where Cockpit USA is actually kind of valuable, I think, because they cater to a fair amount of body types. This is a company that leans vintage in the direction of jackets that are either exacting replicas of US military wear from the early to mid 20th century, or jackets that are more inspired by them. But the thing to note here is that leather jackets are the one area where everyone's happy for to have like a slightly vintage bent to it, I think. Like, like few people are really gonna argue with a jacket that looks like this or this or this. Like they can fit into most wardrobes. Although it's worth noting the brand is low on like cafe racer jackets, uh, jackets without elastic knit waistbands and black leather jackets. They do have some, but you'll be less disappointed if you just go in looking for a brown leather jacket. The other thing to note with this brand is that as a brand that leans heritage and vintage, most of the jackets, again, not all of them, mine is one of the exceptions, but most of them have fits based on the old military fits, meaning shorter waists, relaxed fit uppers, and again, elastic knit waistbands. This is because as the name suggests, they really like the old fighter pilot jackets, which were worn while sitting down in a cockpit, so you didn't want them to be long. And you wanted room in the upper to move your arms freely. And with the waistbands, they make them easy to fit more people so that the Air Force didn't have to order a ton of jackets with slightly larger and slightly smaller waistbands and everything, right? Like the, the knit waists made them able to fit a wider variety of bellies. Their models, like the, the jacket models, do tend to be shorter, but thankfully they do have a wide range of longer jackets too. They still have a bit of a boxier fit, but they'll fit better if you're taller. So these models aren't restricted to short guys and not to slim guys either. In fact, what all this does is make them a very good brand for the average American male body type, which is a bit bigger at the waist. These vintage cuts aren't super slim, like the cuts that are very prevalent today, like what, what are called modern or, or slim or athletic. Like, so if you're a guy who doesn't look like a runway model and you're sick of all these jackets designed for guys with six packs, this is actually a very good brand for you. So just go to your local clothing alterations place, give them a few bucks to measure your body, and then use those measurements to find the right fit for you at Cockpit. Uh, if, if a lot of brands are too slim for you, you'll be pretty surprised, I think. Another cool thing about Cockpit is that while a lot of the jackets in this price range on the market uh, are like sheepskin or lambskin, these guys sell jackets that are really tough, like really like celebrated leathers for jackets. Like of course cowhide, but also goatskin and horse leather which is like the preferred jacket for a lot of leather jacket snobs. I wouldn't say I'm one of them, but I know more than a couple of guys who are like horse hide or bust. And you can get a horse hide jacket made in America for under 700 bucks at Cockpit USA. And again, it's made in the USA. So if you know leather jackets, uh, you'll be impressed with that price. If not, you have a thing or two to learn about leather jackets. <laughs> they do tend to be a bit more expensive. So now I'm just gonna talk about my jacket here, right? This is called the Type 440 USN Carrier Jacket. 
This jacket is maybe a loophole in the reproduction or repro world because it is a repro of a prototype that the military was working on pre-World War II, an alternative to a sheepskin jacket that was often impractical. It's a Navy jacket, it's not an Air Force jacket, and you can actually see the original jacket they pulled from their archives to send me a picture of. Check it out. So this is my jacket from 100 years ago, albeit with woolly lining, which would have been cool, but like whatever, it, it looks really great. So this is, a, this is a pretty authentic reproduction of an old jacket, although it didn't really get widely adopted. And everything else besides that sheep wool lining is totally authentic for a jacket that was designed for the Navy. This leather is goat skin, super common in Cockpit USA's lineup and super common in old military jackets. The difference with goat and cow leather is basically the goat has better stretch and flexibility and softness. Aesthetically, the green isn't as like uniform as cowhide tends to be. So if you're really into that more superficial side of it, which of course the military isn't, you might prefer cow uh, or like lamb, which is nowhere near as tough as goat, but it is much smoother and softer. So, you know, you make the right decision for yourself. There's a debate as to whether goat or cow is tougher. Some folks online swear that cow wins, but I did a video on different jacket leathers with a different company. And like they said pound for pound, goat is tougher than cow. I think the way it's tanned and processed makes a difference here, but like the difference isn't, if there is one, it's not very big. Like for our purposes here, goat is simply more authentic if you like that reproduction vibe. Um, and you probably do if you're thinking about this brand. And it's more common in military use because it's a little bit cheaper. It's very, very, very tough still, however you slice it. And because it's got more stretch and flexibility, it's got the practical benefit, uh, sort of like I said about the waistband earlier, it's got the benefit of being, well, better for mobility and swinging your arms in the cockpit. And the stretch means that one size is going to fit more people than something that doesn't stretch as much, which makes it easier for the military, not needing to have like a million extra fractional sizes to be made out of inflexible leather. It's just, uh, goat skin's just like, a very subjectively a little bit less pretty. But again, military doesn't care about that. And why would you, why should anyone? Anyway. My jacket's goat. Most guys would probably call this a flight style jacket, even though it is for the Navy because of the classic button pockets here, which also have side entry handle pockets in addition to an inside chest pocket. It's also got these cool USN specified uh, diamond shaped elbow patches to reinforce them, which is cool. The patches make it a bit less dressy, I guess, if that bugs you. There's a chance it might because like the slimmer fit and lack of elastic waistbands does make this a, a little bit dressier and more versatile than some of the brand's other offerings. So I would call this more versatile than regular flight jackets. You can make the waist even slimmer on, as well with these uh, waist adjusting belts down here. So I really like this jacket. Like it, it fits really well. It dresses up and down pretty well. The only complaints I can see someone having with this particular model, um, like to, to start small, the front pockets here, they close with buttons instead of clasps, like my other flight jackets. So it's a little bit harder to open and close when you're on the go, if your fingers are cold, that kind of thing. When you're putting like your phone in and out of there on your commute, you'll quickly realize it can be a little frustrating to get in and out of there if you if you want like the clean look of the flats being closed, but like whatever, like that's not really much of a complaint. This jacket only comes in brown because it is simply an authentic repro. <laughs> the lining is nylon twill, not cotton, if you're a stickler for all natural materials. Although the lining is, I mean, it's, a, it's authentic, again. And also I find a lot of guys prefer nylon or polyester lining, so it's easier to glide your hands down the sleeves without your undershirt's cuffs getting stuck. I can see someone gravitating toward this model as well because it's an actual repro while still being pretty slim and modern looking. Like, like it really is the best of both worlds type look. But I can see some guys getting close to buying it and then like deciding the elbow patches make it too casual, right? I don't think they stand out very much personally, but yeah, I guess if you're like really sleek and minimalist, I can see you almost pulling the trigger and then deciding not to based on those leather patches. But the fact that they're USN specified, I think it's a pretty cool extra touch and it doesn't bother me at all. I think this jacket looks really good with a button down actually. This is me wearing it with a button down and chinos and derbies a couple weeks ago and I, I think it looked really cool. A bit, maybe a bit Indiana Jonesy for some folks, but I think it, I think it worked really well in a modern wardrobe. Uh, there are some loose threads after a bit of wear, which is worth pointing out. The only thing that really bothers me personally is this gigantic like a zipper protector running down the inside, right? These are very common to keep the zipper from shredding your shirt, but it's so big that I don't know, I don't always love the look of this jacket unzipped. Like I guess I could always cut it off if it really bothered me though. And, and again, if I didn't have this, it wouldn't be an authentic repro. But uh, it, it, this makes it look less cool when it's, un, when it's unzipped as well. Like, and it doesn't need to be this big either. It could be quite a bit smaller in my opinion. Um, but again, it, otherwise it wouldn't be an authentic repro, would it? So look, I mean, in that, <laughs> the video is a bit all over the place, but uh, I hope you found this helpful. That's my review of this jacket and this brand. Uh, I think the main thing I want to convey here anyway is that as a repro brand, it is a really good option for guys who want a quality leather jacket that will fit stockier body types. Again, that's not this model, but a lot of them are really good for stockier guys. And you also just can't deny how cool it is that these are military repros that they made the Rocky jackets and the Top Gun jackets, and they still supply the Air Force, and they're still to this day made in the USA. Uh, I think Cockpit USA should be better known. Um, they've got a fair few non-leather jackets as well, actually. They've got like a 
a really good melt and wool pea coat for under 500 bucks. This cool cotton jacket is like just 120 bucks. This is another cool cotton jacket they've got. They've got some really good parkas as well. But like it really is a good brand. While the leather jackets aren't the cheapest on the entire market, for what they're offering, and especially again, given they're made in the USA, it, they're a pretty good value. They're, they're pretty damn good price and pretty good quality. Like the hardest thing is working out your fit, but it's great for bigger dudes. And if you reach out to them, you'll find some options for the slimmer dudes as well. And they have the tall sizes for a lot of their models as well. Um, again, you'll, you'll have an easier time if you just go to your local alterations place and get some measurements made so you can get like nice and accurate. Um, you get that, then this, almost entirely online brand is gonna be very friendly to helping you to pick out the right model that's going to reflect the right fit for your body type. Uh, that's my video. I'm trying to cover a few more of the jackets on this channel as well. So stick around if you like the kind of content or just any content about apparel and bags and boots and stuff that's made to last a long time. Uh, that's it, subscribe, did I say that? Subscribe anyway and have a good day.